I want to share with you a different way of looking at language learning and an adventure that it took me on. I feel very strongly that the way languages are taught traditionally in school is immensely frustrating and it's very inefficient. It is my belief that language learning can be exciting and truly mind expanding that is the inspiration behind all of my language adventures. So I'm going to draw out how I visualize this and explain as I go along to conceptualize how I see language learning, how I see this whole process. This is a significant investment in terms of time and energy. It is not easy to learn a language. And I think the more concrete we can turn something that is abstract and potentially overwhelming, the easier it becomes to break it down, to understand what's going on, to make progress, and by far the most important of all, to enjoy the process. First and foremost, I think what is lacking is a clear explanation as to the mechanics of language in general, how language works. And these are universal concepts that apply to all languages, no matter what you're learning or what you speak. This is a reflection of human nature, really, how we use language. It changed everything for me and how I saw languages when I finally saw things clearly through this lens. Take it or leave it, it's up to you. The way I have always traditionally visualized language is like a solar system where we have concentric circles building out. Now, this is not new, but there's a concept essentially that we need to take into account here, which is word frequency. Some words are used a lot more than others, words and phrases. So for example, a word like the or a or and, those are very, very common words in English, and they're used a lot more often than a random word like dolphins or horses for that matter. Not that those nouns are not important, but they're used less often than the. Can you imagine trying to have an entire conversation without using the word the? It'd be difficult. What we're trying to do here is rank by importance and everything gets ranked. So with this concept of language, okay, this solar system, we're gonna build this out in terms of word frequency, where the most frequently used words are at the very center, okay, ranked by frequency of usage. And as you build out, it's less and less commonly used words. So this circle here represents the top 10% of words uh, used in the English language or any given language, all the way out to the final circle. Now, a couple things to keep in mind here. First of all, these exact words will look differently depending on the language and how it's structured and how it's used. So the top 10% of words in English are not going to be necessarily exactly the same as in Spanish, for example. And there's a level of personalization that's going on here uh, in that that top 10% of words that is used by any given person is going to be a reflection of how they think and their vocabulary and their life and their interests. So your top 10% isn't necessarily exactly like my top 10% in English. I always felt during my exchange year in France where I did become fluent in the language that my vocabulary in cuisine in food in general was weak. It wasn't as good as it could be. It was because that year I didn't spend a lot of time cooking. So my cuisine and food vocabulary is probably ranked lower than somebody else learning the French language uh, to become a chef. I would imagine their cuisine and food vocabulary is much higher, much more important, probably in the top 10 or 20%. Now here's the thing. I just built this out, this solar system that represents a language uh, in terms of evenly spread out circles. But that's not actually how this works. What we need to do here is a weighted representation of word frequency, of how often words are actually used in terms of how much space they take up in the solar system. What this should actually probably look like is the inner circle is much, much larger, okay? Takes up a huge percentage of the total solar system because that top 10% of words actually accounts for well over half of all language use in the language. And then the next circle takes up a, another large percentage of the solar system, but much smaller than the first circle, and then smaller and smaller and smaller. This is actually how 
language works. This is known as the Pareto Principle, also commonly known as the 80-20 rule. Um, I've talked about this before. This applies to so many different domains in life. If you're curious about this idea, I highly recommend you look further into it because I've actually used this law of the universe, of nature, in how I organize my life, in where my time and energy goes, how I can sort of maximize what I'm doing. I feel like you gotta give yourself every possible advantage that you can. So let's talk about takeaways from all of this. I think it's very powerful to approach language learning in terms of prioritization. What is the top 1% of most frequently used words and expressions? What is gonna take me the furthest in terms of comprehension, in terms of self-expression, especially in the beginning to get the boat offshore? This can of course expand out to eventually fill most if not all of the solar system, right? That's the goal. But it doesn't all have to happen at once. In fact, I think that's why it can feel so overwhelming to get going with a language. It's actually incredible how much coverage you can have on a language uh, with a very small set of very commonly used words and expressions. There's a lot of research about this out there that I will link to down below. So that's it. You have my secret. You can now go out and apply it to whatever language that you're learning. You really have nothing to hide here. I take such great joy in seeing other people share my passion for languages. So please, like, use this however you see fit. If you feel lost about how to go about this, I worked for four months with my friend Johnny Harris to create a language learning course to answer all questions that you may have. We went way, way more in depth into this way of approaching language. And between the two of us, we shared all of the tools and techniques that we have to learn, to memorize, to go through this entire process, to navigate the choppy waters of learning a new language. I'm honestly really proud of how it came out. It contains everything I know about language learning up to this point. The reason I charge money for it is just because of the amount of effort and energy and research and time that went into making this happen. So I'll link to it down below if you're interested. I made a lot of language learning materials available for free on my website, and all you have to do is sign up to my newsletter, which is also free, and I'll send it to you. The thing that I always go back to is that language is experiential. It is something that is meant to be used. I only learn languages to connect with other people and to understand their way of seeing the world and living life. It is really not about lists of words or tables of conjugation. So in the spirit of capturing what excites me about languages. Uh, I wanted to share a little adventure that I went on a few months ago with a Belgian friend of mine. This is for the love of travel and exploration, and it would have never been possible had I never learned French. On a road somewhere in southern Portugal, the light is just ridiculous right now. I mean, ridiculous. And with my Belgian friend, Greg, Gregoire, Gregory, I don't know, je sais pas comment dire en anglais. <laughs> Greg, <laughs> la coccinelle. La coccinelle. And basically, uh, I'm going to attempt to learn how to drive a uh, stick for the first time ever. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I don't think it's super complicated, but I'm, I'm, uh, we'll see how things go. Before I dive in, though, I do want to talk briefly about the sponsor of this video, Morning Brew. My new big thing is newsletters. I think that's probably the reason why I mention mine so often. It's because I think I'm coming to realize that it is an amazing way to reach people and to share ideas. And that I think is why it's growing so quickly. Morning Brew is like the tech finance version of what I'm doing. I found that it's a way less intrusive, less distracting way of getting distilled down information on what's going on in the world. This is one of my many solutions to spend less time on social media. I feel like I'm learning from it. It's well-written, interesting, and free, and it helped me follow along with the whole GameStop saga, for example. The newsletter goes out daily, Monday through Saturday. So if you're interested in tech, business, or finance, consider checking it out. It takes like 15 seconds to sign up, and I'll link to it down below. I read it. So thank you, Morning Brew, for sponsoring this video. Now on to my adventure. Stop, stop, stop. Quoi? Une fois que c'est démarré, faut lâcher. Je peux... Euh, tu peux lâcher, ouais. Nathan va apprendre à conduire euh, une boîte à vitesse manuelle, chose qu'il n'a jamais faite de sa vie. Je lâche le frein. Tu dois embrayer. Tu embrayes, comme ça. Tu mets la première, ça va être facile parce que tu es en pente. Ouais. Là maintenant, tu accélères et tu lâches l'embrayage doucement. Oh. <rire> ok. Putain, c'est compliqué. Et pour, et pour freiner S'il y a un problème, tu freines. Mais ouais. tu fais que freiner. Ok, tu t'en fous des vitesses. Ok, d'accord. Là, passe la troisième. 
en braille, okay. à fond, tu passes, voilà, doucement, c'est beau, tu lâches, voilà. Yeah, Putain, yeah, yeah Pas mal Pas mal J'ai peur d'aller trop vite là. Ouais, là t'es bien, là t'es bien. Comment tu fais pour euh, changer les vitesses Tu fais 3, 2, 1 ou tu fais genre 3, 1 3, 2, 1. Jamais tu dire si tu peux, tu peux faire, mais bon, c'est pas, c'est pas top. Ça se conduit facilement, hein Ouais. Non mais en fait, tu, je me sens toujours très mal à l'aise en changeant les ouais, vitesses ouais. là. Je passe changer. la quatrième, pas doucement, pas besoin d'aller trop vite. T'en C'est bien, va pas, va pas dans le fossé, va pas dans le fossé. Non, non, non Pardon, pardon. C'est -ce -ce bien, c'est bien, bien. Maintenant, tu euh, passes la deuxième. Ok. T'embrayes. Euh... Tac. Voilà, comme ça. Nickel, ouais. Oh voilà. merde, qu'est-ce que j'ai ah, fait bien. <rire> Oh putain. Oh putain. Je sais pas ce que je fais là. Je sais pas ce que je fais là. Là, c'est parfait. Ça, c'est pas badant. C'est pas badant du tout. Et t'es pas une clète. Attends, t'es pas une clète. Oh là là, mais comment tu fais pour penser à autant de choses en même temps En conduisant, putain c'est beaucoup quand même Putain mec, c'est génial conduire cette voiture C'est la classe putain, et c'est trop beau, hein je suis énervé <rire> C'est vraiment trop beau, il n'y a personne là Je rêve, qu'est-ce que j'ai fait pour mériter ça One of the trickiest things about driving manual is starting up Vas-y Mets des gaz, mets des gaz Oh merde <rire> C'est beaucoup, beaucoup plus rapide Beaucoup plus rapide Ouais Putain, quelle honte, quelle honte, je, je gère pas du tout, je gère pas du tout. Ok, t'appuies okay. sur l'embrayage Ouais. Ouais, ok, 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 je suis prêt, je suis prêt. Accélère, 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 accélère Voilà. Ouais, ouais bon <rire> Mais j'ai pas compris ce que j'ai fait là. Je sais. Passe oh, la deuxième, non. passe la deuxième. Qu'est-ce que c'était qu -ce que Passe la deuxième, voilà. Voilà, accélère. Ah, ok. <rire> Putain, j'ai n'importe quoi. Yeah! C'est ça la vie. Regarde, tiens, un beau moulin à droite là. Petit moulin. Petite bagnole. Sightseeing with Nathaniel Blue. Petite colline. Wow. Wow. Ça, c'est pas fantastique. On n'a pas vraiment de destination, on n'a pas regardé les spots intéressants, mais on prend les toutes petites routes, on prend les pistes, on traîne dans les villages, on fait quatre fois le tour, on va à l'église, on regarde un peu toutes les rues qui sont intéressantes dans les alentours et c'est ça qui est fantastique en fait parce que on s'émerveille je trouve de, de, de choses qui sont beaucoup plus simples. Une vache bloque Wouhou. notre chemin. Ça nous donne encore plus envie d'explorer de, ce monde là avec, euh, avec des voitures, avec le, enfin, la nature, camping, voyage, tout ça. Je pense que pas mal de tes abonnés tueraient pour pouvoir avoir cette opportunité. <rire> And then came the dogs. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, <putain. laughs> the time for fun and games was coming to an end. Ah, ah, j'ai bien freiné. Alors tu mets au point mort. Ouais. Point mort. Juste au dessus. Stop. Voilà. Non, tu mets frein. Voilà. C'est bon. Ouais. Je peux lâcher les deux. Je viens d'apprendre à Nathan de, de, de conduire une boîte manuelle. En 10 minutes, on a failli se faire bouffer par un chien, se prendre un mur. Euh, franchement, c'était pas mal. All in all, I'm gonna need a lot more practice to feel comfortable driving stick, but this is a really great start. <rire>